we've uh, arrived in Crosshaven, which is just south of Cork City. It's on the... Um... Well, we're a lot further on than y'all. <laughs> we are indeed. But we've had an editing crisis, haven't we? We have. Um, we looked at the footage that we took uh, to talk about the Yawl Passage and it was... <laughs> so we're having to redo that. <laughs> Luckily we've got uh, a stormy day. I know it doesn't look stormy, we're sitting out at sunshine, but it's strong winds and um, we're not we're not prepared to go to it. It's strong winds, it'll be on our nose, we'll have um, sea bottoms that alter so we'll have a lumpy bottom and that's going to make it rough isn't it? It certainly is but... And, and remember um, we, we like to have comfortable sailing if we can get away with it don't we? We do. So what we thought we'd do is we'd reshoot our little piece about Yall even though we're nowhere near the place. No, um, we came into Yall and um, we were on a um, bearing of 300 degrees because that's the leading line into y'all. Yes, there's a there's a big bar protecting y'all and there's a um, a west passage which is actually to the south but it's on the western side and an east passage. We came in over the east passage didn't we? We certainly did and that's the one that's got the 300 um, bearing of 300 degrees. Whoa! <laughs> Wind galore. <laughs> the reason I'm wearing my hat by the way is because I've got longer hair than her and it blows everywhere. Um. That is true. <laughs> Yeah, so we came in and there's a leading line and the problem with the leading line is from a distance of about two miles out it's almost impossible to see it. The binoculars is just merely very difficult. She's talking about the sectored light there. The leading line you can never see. <laughs> because... Okay, beep! We came into y'all uh, over the east bar and there is a sectored light there. The problem with the sectored light is from a distance of about a mile to two miles out you haven't got a hope in hell of seeing it. You need binoculars. Even with binoculars it is very very difficult to see. I mean say um, we met a uh, subscriber there who is a local to y'all. And he said sectored light? Where? <laughs> I've lived here for years never seen it. <laughs> He's not actually seen the white sector. The red sector's not too bad. The red sector is actually better. It's actually much, much, much stronger. Um, when you well, get, to... of unfortunately, you're on the rocks by then. <laughs> the white sector, once you're within about a, um, a three quarters of a mile, half a nautical mile, it's very obvious and you can't miss it. But by then, I think you're already over the bar, so it's too late. Yeah, um, which is why um, leading lines and knowing what bearing you should be on is um, the way to go. It's definitely a help. Um, so the other thing is we got onto the pontoon in y'all and I've got one piece of advice about that pontoon, two pieces of advice about that pontoon actually. Mm -hmm. First it's a part time pontoon. You're allowed to be on it between the hours of I think it's six o'clock at night and about nine o'clock the next morning because during office hours, nine till five, um, it's used for commercial operations and for boat trips and things like that. So during nine to five hours they want you off it and you can go to one of the mirroring boys. Um, it is free though, so um, you yep. know that is at least useful to know that you can come in and the shops are open until 10 o'clock. And there's great shopping. There's a, there's an Aldi, there's a Tesco's, I think there's a Little somewhere. Uh, I'm not too sure but there was definitely yep. a good couple of shops. There is. Um, so you've got all that and um, the problem we had was the next morning getting off the pontoon. We came in late and we had to raft up and that, that will be the case for anybody who comes in. There's not a lot of space on the pontoon so rafting is common. Um, the tide goes, um, it doesn't change gradually, it goes from going out to coming in like that and it's, it goes out and then it rotates clockwise toward the pontoon. If you're the outer rafted boat you get pushed onto the inner boat. If you're on the pontoon you get pushed onto the pontoon. It can actually be quite difficult to get off if you don't have something like a bow thruster. We actually had to spring ourselves off it. We certainly did. So um, if the, it, it's not very long the slack um, but either go uh, just before the tide flips because yeah. it weakens, it weakens, it weakens and then it's like wow bam that's that's quite yeah, we strong. Made, we, we made the mistake of oh look the slack's coming up well we'll just finish this cup of tea then we'll go up and get the boat prepped and off we go and by the time we've done that we've been pushed against the pontoon. So um, it's, it's literally that quick. 
Uh, once we were off, we went and took one of the free mirroring boys. There's um, eight of them. They have pickups, but the pickups have got a nasty habit of getting wrapped around the chains. So uh, we used our Mr. Swifty mirroring tool to uh, keep... Uh, and we actually wrap, uh, went on to one that didn't have uh, the pickup because just, I did, I did, snag, yeah. I did snag the uh, pickup. But because it was so wrapped round the chain, it was impossible to get uh, another rope on. It was very difficult. So we just went and found a clean one where the, the pickup boy had come off and we, we took it. Another little piece of advice. We were told the further in you go, the further north you go, um, the less tide the mooring, the moorings suffer. But the problem we had was the very, very northerly, most northerly one. It's quite shallow under it, so we went for the third one down in the end, didn't we? Well, that was the one that didn't have the pickup. Um, yeah, but it also had considerably more depth under it. It did. It had plenty for us. So we had a sort of compromise. We got a bit more tide, but we got a, we got a lot more depth. Now, that, that was our compromise. Mm. But other than that, y'all, it's a great stop point, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, it was really nice meeting our subscriber. And as I've yeah. said on our channel many a time, if you are a subscriber, do get in touch. We love meeting you and having a chat and a, in this case, I think it was uh, tea and uh, cakes. Tea and cakes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so the passage out of y'all. Um, it was a motor sail. It was. Uh, initially, it was just a straight motor. There was no point in sailing because there was absolutely zero wind. Um, the kids at the local school gave us a cheer as we went past. We gave them a couple of toots, didn't we? Mm -hmm. uh, we went over the... West Bar as it's called and headed for Ballycotton Head and we were lucky enough that when we arrived at sea we actually did pick up a little bit of wind and we were able to do some motor sailing. But the scenery at that section is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. Oh we'll need the sun cream today. You really can understand why they call this the Emerald Isle. Well, because it, it rains a lot. Well, no, because it's just so green. That's because um, it rains a lot. Well, it does rain a lot. The Irish are the palest skinned people in the world because it's perpetually covered in cloud. Well, there is that. Even the Scandinavians are more tanned than the Irish. <laughs> or so I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> I could believe it. The way I burn, I could believe it. <laughs> But it's absolutely beautiful scenery, um, and there's quite a lot of interest. Yes, like there's the MV Alta. Yeah, which is a ghost ship. And was. Was a ghost. Well, <laughs> it's disintegrating. Um, quite a bit. It was abandoned somewhere near Bermuda in the Atlantic wasn't it? In 2018 and um, they got the Bob crew off. Yep, it bobbed across. And um, it ended up just outside um, Ballycotton. Mm. Um, and um, in 2020 it broke up into two big pieces and when we saw it I think it was maybe three. Maybe in the three pieces it was certainly extremely rusty it was hard to tell which end of the boat was which. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it was still interesting to see that ghost yeah. ship. If you are coming the, along the coast from Yall toward um, Cork, uh, one little piece of advice that you might find useful if, you've done, if it's the first time you're doing it, is you won't see Cork coming and you won't see the opening either. It's just one big long continuous coastline and there's clearly no way in. Um, you, have, you can see the lighthouse on Roach's Point so you know where the opening has to be. Mm. 
but until you're actually right up next to it, it's very, very difficult to see it. Mm. Um, so once you've done that, you come in through the opening, you, you tick, tick a left turn and you're into Crosshaven. Marinas in Crosshaven. Uh, there's Crosshaven Boatyard, mm -hmm. and then it's Sla Slav. No, Salve. Salve. Mm -hmm. And then it's Royal Cork uh, Yacht Club, which is the one with all the history and all the facilities. Yes. Yeah, so we <laughs> want. I want. Well, I wanted to come to um, Royal Cork because uh, it's the oldest uh, club in the world. Oldest yacht club. Oldest yacht club. Mm -hmm in the world and I love things that have got history and things like that so more importantly the other two didn't say they had shower blocks yeah and so this one does this one does definitely. and washing facilities and washing facilities yeah <laughs> and all the things that um, a, a person who's been out at sea for quite a while at anchor needs <laughs> But, the uh, shop is a centre though. The shop is a centre, so um, it's you will pay sort of like local-ish prices, they're not too bad. Um, the, the choice is a little bit restricted, but it was a good shop otherwise. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, hopefully that will um, do our trip for you all. Um, and um, yeah. And that's where Gainer runs out. <laughs> Yeah, like a, like a plane landing and running out of fuel on the <laughs> runway. interesting anchorage because looking out you've got a lot of industry and things like that but you've also got beautiful houses nestled in woodland so you've got lots of different things to look at I was a bit cautious because you're quite a distance out but we're right next door to the mooring field so we're just on the outside of the mooring field that uh, belongs to Monkstown Marina, but we're in an ideal position to just mosey up the river to go and pick up our friend and um, have a sailing holiday. So that's what's coming up next. 